I did want to show one thing here, though, that uh, this is from a study that was published back in 1988, and it was published in the journal Science, and it's entitled The Position of the Gulf Stream During Quaternary Glaciations. Now, quaternary is the, again, the, the, is the last two and a half million years where we've been talking about the planet has lurched back and forth between a glacial and an interglacial age. So this is by T. Keffer, D.G. Martinson, B.H. Corliss, 1988 Science, the position of the Gulf Stream during quaternary glaciations, which would include the last glaciation that we're talking about here. So they're talking about a, a gyre, which is a circular motion of water in each of the major ocean basins. The water within each gyre turns clockwise in the northern hemisphere, counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. Okay, because now those gyres rotating can leave evidence of, of them shifting because of the way they will move material and erode the bottom and, of the ocean and so on. So in the, so this is now quoting from, from that article, the position of the Gulf Stream during quaternary glaciations. In the present day North Atlantic Ocean, the boundary between the subtropical and subpolar gyres, so subtropical would be either above or below the equator, the trop, right? Subpolar would be below the, 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 like the Arctic Circle. So you've got, if you look on a global map, you would have a gyre rotating clockwise in the Northern Hemisphere, right? So like this, like this in the Southern Hemisphere, but you've got two gyres rotating, right? So where they meet, the boundary, that's the part that's interesting. So it says here in the present day North Atlantic Ocean, the boundary between subtropical and subpolar gyres runs southwest to northeast from the Hatteras to the Norwegian Sea. The warm Gulf Stream and its extension the North Atlantic Current coincide with this boundary. In contrast, during the last glacial maximum, approximately 18,000 years ago, the gyre boundary and associated currents were more zonal and located further to the south. And I prepared a little graphic here to show. So during the ice age, there was the Gulf Stream. You see what it's doing? So it's, it's diverting south, hundreds of miles further south than it does now. So it's not carrying that warm air, those warm air masses to Northern Europe, which is gonna to contribute to Northern Europe becoming very, very cold. But look what it is doing. It's wrapping, almost embracing the Azores. You see that? What do you think that's gonna do? Here comes the equatorial waters coming up along here and just wrapping around the Azores. What do you think that's gonna do to the climate there? Yeah, it's, it's gonna warm it, warm it up. It's gonna bring a lot of warmth up there. Yes, it is. In fact, during the cold of the ice age, that might be a really nice place to live. Yeah, that's it. It does that same thing for Great Britain now, doesn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. but e in a way, even more so here. You see, of course, it's bringing up. You know, the, you got to picture the whole thing has shifted, shifted south um, from what it is now, um, because the whole planet was much colder then. But the fact that it's it's pulling where the one place where the climate was closer to modern warmth was the equator. So what's happening here is it's pulling up those warm equatorial waters and wrapping them right around the Azores Plateau and then coming back south. So right there, what that does is it, it, it discloses the fact that that would have been a, during the Ice Age, if you're going to start hypothesizing where you might have a culture that could uh, persist and um, proliferate right there, see what we're getting at? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it, and it looks like that exposed continental plate uh, on the east coast of the, of North America is what caused it to push south. It can't go past that spot right there, which now the water's up higher and it can go up farther north, right? Yeah, and in fact, the Gulf Stream now is called the Gulf Stream because it diverts into the Gulf of Mexico and it ah, comes back out. Okay. And which it doesn't, it didn't do during the Ice Age. Yeah, it can't get in there. No, it can't get in there. That's exactly right. So... So you see, the pieces here are, are beginning to fall into place that, um, 
that it would just be premature to, to, to rule out the possibility of there being a, a relatively sophisticated maritime culture that could have evolved on islands during, in the Mid-Atlantic Ridge during the late glacial maximum. There's nothing, at this point, nothing, you know, pseudoscientific about that at all. 